Focusing on, on, on Wellington City to some extent, although Wellington City, of course, for Māori never existed. Um, uh, I will stray out of those bounds where it helps to explain um, uh, some of the uh, some of the naming and and just some of what was happening. I realise in this time I can't get through um, 800 years or so of history. Um, uh, but, but I'll give some pointers as we go along the way. Now, the first contention might be that um, 800 years uh, may be uh, a, a little long from the start of naming in, in Wellington. Can I say that, in my view, archaeology in Wellington is at an early stage? I, I, I actually don't think uh, there is much more to explore. Uh, in terms of um, uh, in terms of just exactly when um, Polynesians are, arrive here, um, and two, I'm going to start with um, uh, with with names that came with Kupe or attributed to Kupe, and I'll say a little bit more about Kupe, uh, as well as the Kahui Maunga. Uh, now others have used other terms uh, for and various uh, kahui, kahui tupua, others, really about what will probably treat pre-tribal Māori. Um, and they were certainly um, uh, here in Wellington and, um, uh, and, and uh, they had, had various European names to some extent. Uh, rightly or wrongly, some call them more hunters. Uh, were there more here? Did more point actually refer to actual more? And the answer is yes. Um, 
And if you look hard in the bush, you might still see some. Um, naming uh, really continued with what I call uh, the first of the Māori settlements. So uh, those kāhui and, and those ones moved around in um, uh, following food, but never really engaged in settlements. Uh, and, and the first uh, peoples um, that, that really started to settle here um, were headed by Whātonga and uh, to an extent his two sons, Tara, Taraika and uh, Tautoki. Um, they came uh, probably from around Mahia um, and they came uh, along the coast and into the harbour. And the first place that uh, they stopped at was Machu, the island. Um, we'll have a look at some of the other tribes uh, that came through Wellington and uh, the naming that they left, um, Waitaha, Ngāti Māmoi and Naitau, and people will recognise, recognise those as South Island peoples now. Um, later um, came um, uh, Ngāti Mutunga and Ngāti Tama, along with Te Aotearoa and uh, the others of, of Taranaki, Taranaki Tuturu, um, uh, Ngāti Ruanui, uh, Ngāti Tama uh, and um, others, Ngāru Hine, essentially all of the Taranaki tribes, one way or another, had a presence here in Wellington. Um, the uh, period from about 80 arrival of the musket to 1840 changed the uh, tribal dynamic uh, almost everywhere uh, in the North Island. And, and uh, uh, Wellington was not spared. And uh, the muskets arrived, and I'll talk a bit more about that. Um, uh, but in 1839, uh, the New Zealand Company uh, arrived. Um, you know these people more these days. I, I think they're called real estate agents. Um, uh, and and uh, they're a private company. Um, and uh, they came to set up business, to buy and sell land, and um, to establish colonisation. Um, they weren't. The British government. Uh, but settlers were soon to arrive uh, in the 1840s uh, in Wellington uh, in large numbers and that was to change the dynamic for Māori irreversibly or perhaps not irreversibly. Um, and then going into the 20th century um, for Wellington City itself Māori had virtually gone by about 1870. And that's another, another piece of history. So that sort of sets out the scheme of, um, uh, of, of naming that I'll talk about. I'm not going to talk about much about European naming, just a little bit um, uh, about the New Zealand company. So many of you are familiar with um, the Kupe names, um, familiar with uh, Machu, Mako, um, the two uh, islands in the harbour, um, and uh, you you see that there's a there's a there's a third island in there uh, called Mukapuna. Uh, my theory is that Mukapuna arrived later that it was part of Machu. And uh, we, as you know, live in, um, uh, in uh, geology that, that moves a lot. Most people think the land should stand still. Um, but as you know, in Wellington, it doesn't. Uh, and it uh, can go up and down. Um, and of course, there are, there are the Kupe names, not just here, um, but in other, other places, uh, but you'll be familiar with these ones and uh, 
each of those uh, carry a story. I'm not going to go into, into those, but um, uh, of course, Steeple Rock, where, um, uh, where the Inter Island Ferry, Wahine eventually ended up um, on its side. Uh, the Tangihanga Kupe uh, Barrel Reef, um, that uh, it, it was uh, well known, but um, um, no, very, very important. Um, uh, Te Tūranga Kupe uh, and, and others. Uh, Parepero, you'll all be familiar with, uh, with red rocks. Um, Rimo Rapa, um, simply ahead, uh, is an important part of, uh, of, of, of some of the uh, some of the stories here. Um, there's one particular name that, that kind of um, uh, yeah, it gets me a little exercised, and it, and it should be uh, a very straightforward one, but it, it is this name. Or Maru Paiku. Kuru is the breadfruit. So the one thing that that name tells me is that um, uh, Maru uh, was sitting here pining after breadfruit. So we don't grow breadfruit here. Um, so I think that's early on in the, in, in, in the migration story. Um, uh, later, of course, uh, that place was called Point Jerningham after Edward Jerningham Wakefield, um, one of the many Wakefield names uh, in Wellington. Wakefields, of course, uh, being tightly associated with the New Zealand Company. Um, why is there an issue about Omaru Kaipu? Seems to make sense, looking out to sea dreaming of eating uh, breadfruit. Um, but some have applied this uh, to a place that um, uh, that you'll know as Shelley Bay, uh, an old Air Force base um, in Evans Bay. Uh, in my mind, quite incorrectly, uh, they dropped the, the um, uh, possessor um, and called it uh, Maru Kaikuru. Um, I think the mistake was made by Percy Smith um, uh, early on uh, in the history of things, and I'm not quite sure why that is, but uh, why would we have two places with the same name very close together um, in, in, in that sense? So I just lay that on the table, names even back in the mists of time um, can provide some interesting debate. Um, I, I want to talk a little bit about um, about Kupe, and uh, there are many oral traditions about Kupe. Um, there, there are two here in terms of uh, his arrival in the harbour, and one that he arrived to find it only populated by a flock of spirits and two birds, the kōkako and the tiwaiwaka. Um, in other words, he was the first uh, of, the, of the human arrivals uh, into the harbour. Um, later it was recorded that, um, that when he arrived, the statement was made that the fires of occupation were already ablaze, um, uh, and that the place was already occupied, um, which is true. Um, I don't know, it takes scholars much better than me to, to argue that. Coupe himself um, is, is, a, is, a, is a bit of a mystery. Now we know the, the association with the Hokianga, um, uh, and uh, the stories there. But if you follow the stories, there's, um, there's, there's a large error in time, which suggests that there was not just one Kube that came here, but two. 
and how that story is unraveled um, is, uh, is, is another of those things that maybe in time uh, we, we, will, we will discover in, in, in that sense. Um, but the stories here, sorry? Can, can, can I, can I explain that, if you like, with um, a, a little bit in, in, in terms of names? Um, so, Kupe's Waka was, was named Matapaurua. Those who have been to Waitangi see the really big carved canoe that was carved in, in uh, 1939, and that is called Nātoki Matapaurua the Riyadh's waka of Matafaura. So Kupe left, Kupe didn't settle um, in, in, in Aotearoa. And so the story goes that what came back was the Riyadh's waka. Um, and uh, that provided uh, the settlers and, uh, and coming uh, to the far north. That may explain something about time, um, but uh, uh, but uh, listening to um, uh, Pat Hoeva, he had another theory that, that in fact Kupe was not a name, but was a was a rank. Um, the Kupe would mean something like captain. Um, now I, I'm not enough of uh, uh, to, to, to know that matter. Um, but it, it, it seems for certain um, that, uh, that Matapaurua went back, uh, or certainly in Māori tradition, that's, that's the case. Um, uh, um, Kupe, of course, had a, a, a little trouble with, um, uh, with wives and things, and as, as, as does happen, and um, I won't go into those, those stories, but, um, uh, but um, uh, so his wife uh, Kura Maratini was, was on the waka and uh, some say that her other name was uh, Hini Taparangi, um, but I think that was somebody different and as, uh, associated with that was the Feke Muturangi and um, and of course, uh, Kupe, uh, the, the uh, Muturangi was 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 seen, and um, uh, Kupe sought uh, to to uh, catch this octopus, and uh, and uh, uh, as you do, I think, let the women on on Matu went over to uh, top of the south into the sounds there. Um, and found Mutsurangi. And I'm straying out of my territory a little, but um, uh, but in the sounds there, um, there there's uh, a couple of islands uh, called Nakaru, the eyes, the eyes of the octopus. Um, now they're called the brothers. Um, not sure why, but uh, uh, but there we go. But it, the Kupe story is a long one. Um, uh, but he was, it wasn't an accidental arrival. Um, uh, but remember that the, the, uh, the Polynesian waka could move uh, quite quickly, much quicker than Cook's endeavour, um, uh, even, even across un unknown territory. And, um, you know, just, just Here's where I'm, I, I get hopelessly astray, so bear with me a little. Um, in navigation, um, what they knew is that um, uh, birds like the Pipiwharaoro um, couldn't land on the sea. And they saw these birds, the navigators saw these birds in the sky and knew that they must be heading for land. And as you know, there are a lot of my, migratory birds uh, for some reason that come here, uh, best known to the birds themselves. 
and um, they, they provided um, a good migratory path. Not only that, if they're going back, um, you can sort of follow that path on the way back. So, yeah. And, and tuna, and the, you know, in, in, in reality, the, 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 the birds, the fish, uh, and, and other things help you uh, a lot on, uh, in, in, in navigation, and they tell you about, um, you know, they're, they're, they're going to feeding sites, and so, you know, the, and the navigators do that well. Um, interesting, other side light is, uh, and, and should follow this is, is to Pius, um voyage with, with Cook and Cook refused to really rely on Tupaya's knowledge um, he would have done a lot better navigating if he had done that but I think uh, he was a navigator and Pride probably didn't allow that and um, uh, you know it, it takes a few hundred years to sort some of these things out but hopefully this year we might sort some of, some of that corridor out and understand um, uh, uh, because Tupaya was a fine example of, of, of navigation. He knew all those signs, he could see it in uh, uh, Cook's boat. He knew when Cook was going astray and uh, uh, it must have been hard for him to, um, uh, to stay quiet. So um, I, I put these in, as 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 part of the names, um, talking about uh, those descendants. But um, uh, some of those, of course, to Pomanui Aparawa Harbour, um, after Talika, uh, and I just put there in terms of uh, uh, Papa. Uh, so uh, Tautoki was a half brother, different mother from Tara. Um, uh, but he uh, was the um, eponymous ancestor, if you like, uh, of Rangitani and, and, uh, and others there. I haven't put the, the, the full popper popper of that, but to an extent, the brothers on their arrival um, had uh, remained part of the went back to Mahia and um, so, if, if you like, the western side became, and, and Wellington became the area of, of Tara, and the eastern side um, uh, became that of uh, Tautoke, more or less. So, some of their names, um, when, when, um, uh, when Fatonga and his sons arrived, they arrived on Machu Island. Uh, and they set up there. But it wasn't long uh, before the discussion was had. And the discussion went like this, that um, why don't we go to the bigger island on, in the harbour? <coughs> and you'll say, well, there wasn't a bigger island in the harbour. Um, but of course, there was. Uh, Motukairangi, now Miramar, and that area, um, wasn't connected uh, with the mainland. Um, that area of sand that's from the time in Kilburnie um, came up probably around 1460, somewhere around there. So we would get a fair idea that Tara and, uh, and, and Whātonga uh, were here before that and that the island was called Motukairangi. Um, and many people have uh, different uh, translations for uh, this, but I, I use the one of, um, uh, of Kairangi being something precious. Now, if you're familiar with greenstone, the very finest of the greenstones is Kairangi. Um, and you'll see there, somewhere there, I've got Tiawa Kairangi. And, and, and what I say is, is and, and what was given to me was that 
that our Kairangi, the Hutt River, was something very precious as well. Yes, um, it, it makes sense that Motu uh, Kairangi is about, um, uh, about connection with the stars and, um, uh, and, and uh, being an island of stargazing. Um, but I, th I think if you look at uh, the, these things, um, uh, that something that's very precious um, is, is, is probably a better interpretation of that. Um, on on Mutukairangi, um, up where Wursa Bay School is now, uh, was the, the old part of Fetukairangi. Um, Fetukairangi, as, as part of that naming, um, here the, in the naming it was that connection with the heavens. Um, and there were a number of par, uh, I, I haven't listed them all, um, around Motukairangi, uh, but um, uh, to the north was Mahanga, uh, and Mahanga, in my view, was, was a, 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 a lookout point and somewhere um, where, where, where Kai was gathered. It's not surprising that that par site was overtaken uh, in uh, uh, the um, uh, late 19th century uh, by Fort Balance. So Fort Balance still exists there, uh, and uh, the, the, the par doesn't, but, um, uh, but military sites, whether they be European or Māori, seem to end up on pretty much the same point. Same thing happened at Oruiti, uh, at, uh, at, at Sea Tune, Point Dorset, uh, Port Dorset down below. Um, and Oruiti, if you have a look, is in visual connection with Mutukairangi. Your signal fires can go bang, 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 and then across. Um, uh, so you, you actually have um, a, a network of, uh, of both lookouts and protected places. Um, but they're also good places to, to gather kai. Um, I, I just wanted to connect up a couple of things uh, which might seem unusual, but um, I thought I'd have a look at um, Māori who signed uh, the treaty here um, and, and place names. And uh, yes, uh, there are some, uh, most of them spelt incorrectly um, for one reason or another. Um, the first one is Ipuni Street in the Aro Valley, um, and that was uh, named after Puniana Tupuni, who had Pitoni Pa, um, and was closely associated with uh, the New Zealand Company. In fact, the principal agent for the New Zealand Company, William Wakefield, lived in that part at Pitoni uh, un until he had a house built over here in Thorndon, as you do. Um, so, treaty signatory, of course. Uh, the next one uh, gets worse. Uh, was the Hori Pauri, Kākāpui Oparangi. Now he was named Horipodi uh, by Nāpui, who thought he was a bit of a, um, uh, he, he was a bit moody perhaps, um, I think is probably um, um, uh, why they, they named him that. But um, uh, Horipodi uh, now is, um, uh, is kind of memorialised by Wadipodi Street. Um, now, I, I think I've seen uh, five different variations of the spelling of that. I haven't seen one use of the correct spelling, which seems simple enough for mine. Um, of that, I'm not sure what that signifies. But the Wadipodi was, 
he was the leadership here in 1840, um, and uh, he, he uh, lived at Nauranga, and um, that was that was his path. Um, but this is this is a mission I have to get Wellington City to to not only spell this right, but we actually need to put his um, original name uh, and a, a little bit of explanation um, so that the people on that street, but everybody else, um, will get a little bit of their history wrong. Um, there was a couple of brothers um, at, uh, at Pipitia Pa. Uh, one was um, Wadarapa, and his brother was Motorua. Um, for some reason, I might have this wrong, but I think Wadarapa was the signatory on the treaty, but not Motorua. Now, I don't know why. Um, there, there might be an answer to that. But uh, Motorua Street, uh, of course, um, over by uh, Pipitia Morai. So they were closely associated with, um, uh, with Pipitia Pa. Um, but just to, to say this, and, and, and this is the way history runs, I guess, that of the 39 signatories of the Treaty in Wellington, and sometimes that number is, is disputed, um, few are recognised today. And um, maybe we can do something about it. At the very least, we can get their names spelled right. Um, and I'll come back to this, but the New Zealand Company, which only list, existed for a relatively short time uh, in Wellington and, and in other places, um, ha have their names everywhere, and I'll say a little bit about that later. Um, right. I thought we'd do some pictures. Um, I, I, I love this picture um, because it, it, um, you need to have a have a have a look at things. So this is the pudding, um, and behind him you will see the flag. Now have a look at that flag, and, and you will see that is the the flag of the Confederation from 1835. Um, uh, it was, of course, the flag of convenience for ships, um, but uh, and they wouldn't have got it wrong. Um, uh, Tupuni was flying that flag. That, that's, of course, Tony Beach um, uh, down there, round about where the wharf is. Um, uh, the power shifted uh, to some extent, but that's uh, kind of familiar territory. That, of course, is Wadi Pauri, Kafkapi, Motorang. And you'll see there, uh, well, it's always interesting to look in the background uh, of the uh, settler ships. Um, wouldn't mind betting, have a look closely, but that's the Tory. And, um, uh, and in, the, in the stakes that went on in 1839, and, that early 1840, um, the one thing I say is that the Tory was faster than the government ships and arrived here ahead of the government ships. Um, and um, uh, the, this was, of course, the New South Wales government, not the New Zealand government. We didn't have one then. Um, uh, but they were determined to do um, uh, their real estate deals um, prior to the intervention of the, of the British government um, in, in, uh, in, in, in matters here. So, um, uh, uh, that's Ipuni Street. <coughs> Wipodi Street. Looks pretty much the same today, really. Um, I'll probably tidy it up a bit. Um, it's surprisingly some of those um, colonial houses uh, still exist. They're wonderful, um, but it does need to get named correctly. All right, I want to come forward to 
charity of chronic refinery names. Um, there's, um, there, there's a number of these. Um, probably the most ubiquitous name is, is Tiaro. Um, Tiaro is a suburb, uh, Tiaro Street, um, uh, but it will really relate back to Tiaro Pa, um, uh, that Pa that was in Taramaki Street um, uh, and um, was uh, bisected by, by Taramaki Street. Um, and was an important part um, for, for a number of reasons, established by Nancy Mutina um, in early, early in their arrival. Um, they, of course, uh, disappeared off to the Chatham Islands in 1835, and they parnoid the lands uh, to uh, their kin of, of Chiao Chiao um, and others of of Taranaki. So at Chiao Pa, uh, there were, um, there, were there, there was um, at Ngāti Tupaya uh, of Ngāti Rune and uh, Ngāti um, Homia of, of Taranaki. Um, and they sort of divided the pa more or less in, in half. Um, the fate of Chao Pa was like the other Pa in Wellington, though. It sat in the middle of, of Wellington's growing commerce um, and things like um, the Custom House and uh, those sorts of things. And the wharf at, at, at Taramaki Street all started to intrude on the Pa, and people gradually um, were. were really forced out of the pa, some of them going back to Taranaki for the, in, in, in terms of the altercations there in the 1860s, uh, and others going uh, to Kin in the Hutt Valley. Um, the same fate really happened at Pipitia, um, and Pipitia, uh, the people were, were, were gradually forced out of there. Thorndon was um, a major part of, um, uh, of, of the colonial uh, development there and the pressure on the pa uh, was, was really high. They held out a bit longer and uh, some were there into the 20th century. Um, between those two pa was Kumutoto, a, a smaller kainga, um, in and around sort of Woodward Lane um, in the terrace. Um, just to note that Kumutoto was the original name of Bowen Street um, and, um, and so the story goes, um, they painted up a sign Kumutoto Street on it, put it up and uh, the old uh, chief Ihaya Fortitude, who was a grumpy old bugger, came up with an axe and said I don't like that name and smashed it off the wall. So it eventually became uh, Bowen Street after it got Bowen. Um, and I'm only taking some examples of these, but if we go um, uh, further out past Johnsonville, uh, you get um, a Takapu um, and, uh, and a said to be named by Patu Kawinga. Who was Patu Kawinga? He was a part of Ngāti Mutunga in those early times. Uh, he was uh, not only out, out that way, um, but also uh, around um, the mouth of the Hutt River, Hikoi Koi Pa um, and Waiwatu Pa uh, were, were part of uh, his territory. But he saw uh, Takapu as, as his food store. There were gardens there along the river. Um, and this is where I get stray out of territory, but I, th I, I think it's um, an interesting point, is, um, is this pa called Kuanaumu, and this was in Titahi Bay. If you go into Titahi Bay, as you're coming over the hill, it's on your left, um, and that was uh, the base for Bawuri Tumutiteri. 
and he was from Nadi Lahiri uh, in Jia, of, of Jia, Jia The thing about um, Rawari was he was an inner kid. Um, he uh, um, uh, he was very fair. Uh, he was probably Albino, um, and um, uh, but um, uh, and um, and he had a a mask to sort of keep the sun off his face, and he had the mask carved with his tattoo on the mask, which seems to be ultimately very sensible um, in, in, in that. Um, so he, he lived out there and, um, you know, Chiao Chiao had power and he eventually came into Nauranga um, and, uh, and, and part of that founded um, the Robson family. And uh, some of you might remember the actress Greer Robson, she's part of that family. Then there are other, now these are names you'll never see, or, or very, very rarely see um, in, in, in these places, but because when Māori colonised, and particularly those from Tamaraki, they were coastal people, so they're going to be around the coast. Um, so one of the hapū of Chia Tiawa was Ngāti Waipumu, um, and I'm talking about our south and part of our west coast um, around there. They're closely related to Ngāti Tāwhiri Kura. Ngāti Tāwhiri Kura were part of those who lived at Patuani Pāma with Ngāti Te Piti uh, and Samoan Te Māti Hau. But when the Europeans came, one of the first homesteads there was the McMiniman home, homestead. That's, well, well one of the homesteads still there. Um, just down below the homestead by the creek is an Udupa, still in Māori ownership, um, but um, one that's in, in, in great need of, of, of care. Um, and so as you go around this coast, um, there are a number of uh, villages and things uh, really of, of, of people related all the way around till you got to Ophiro Bay and then uh, into uh, Paikawakawa and into, into Island Bay. Um, so the people out there were, were, were all kin and related and kind of moved around the coast. So they came around as the city of Wellington or the town of Wellington developed. Um, they came in a, an easterly direction um, from, from their um, various places. Otorongo, another one. Um, if you have a look, you will see about six different spellings uh, for Otorongo. And if you change the spelling, it changes the meaning um, and so on. Um, I prefer to use uh, Otorongo as the, as, as the spelling, but um, Probably the jury's still out on that one. Um, uh, you'll see it spelt quite differently in other places. Um, Ngāti Tama had places uh, on the west coast, um, uh, starting, uh, and I haven't got all of these, um, I've just started at uh, Nutukaka, uh, a um, a, a, a pa near Burn Rock, um, and uh, that was one Jarai at Market Beach, um, and um, uh, Ohari Pa, in, in fact, which was a, 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 a mixture. Uh, Market became uh, the sort of one of the points where, as you went further south, um, it became more Jar <laughs> and. Uh, and north, uh, more um, uh, more Nazi Tama, but nonetheless, we were still uh, quite closely related. Um, if you come into town, uh, into Thorndon here, um, there were small 
uh, Kainga, um, uh, around Pākawā, Bodie and uh, Chiapiwai, um, which were um, Ngāti Tama and uh, Ngāti Mutunga uh, shared those to an extent. The larger part was at Kaiporapara, um, uh, at the end of the valley on the, on the, on the river there. So other names. Um, Hakawakawa was the, the name for um, uh, Thorn and Flats and, um, uh, and we're trying to get that name sort of restored back in there. Um, uh, uh, Kumutoto we've, we're, uh, we've talked about. Um, and the interesting thing about Kumutoto is um, uh, that a lot of the power was uh, bought by uh, churches, um, a congregational church. I don't know what they are now, but um, so good on churches, but um, uh, the Wesleyans and uh, uh, others uh, uh, took interest in, in, uh, in Kumutoto. But the stream remains, and people will know the outlet of uh, of Kumutoto stream. Um, in terms of the meaning of the name, if you take it quite literally, we all know what our Kumu is, and, uh, and, and, but um, we're, we're still, I think, seeking the meaning of that, but it's a name that Taranaki has taken with it. So there is a Kumutoto in the uh, Marlborough Sands, and uh, I haven't found it but in Taranaki itself as well. Um, uh, Kumatoto is a, is, is a well travelled name and there will be a, an older history to the naming of that. Waitā, um, I think associated with the Waitā people, eventually in the South Island and became married into uh, Ngāti Māmoi and, um, and Naitau. Um, there are a number of, um, of Ngāti Māmoi names around, many of them around simply here, Lūmurāpā. Um, and I just, I just want to take this example, Kaumata Pātiti Pā. Um, now when I, I look, went to find this, it's, it's kind of a rocky bit of sort of nothing in, in, along the coastline. Uh, towards uh, um, Kauri Stream, South Kauri, and um, uh, and and it's on, oops, sorry, part of the farm. Um, and when we were doing uh, the, the district plan in Wellington, um, it seemed that these 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 places deserved to exist because they did exist. They are named and they were associated with. Um, but for some reason, of uh, I think 120 names uh, that we put into the Wellington District Plan, there was one that seemed to irritate one farmer, and he took the matter into the Environment Court and succeeded in having it removed from Wellington's District Plan. Well, he doesn't know is you don't remove it from history. You've just been told it's there. Um, and, um, and, and we know where it is in the, in the land, but it, it's interesting that, that a, a piece of farmland that's not going to be affected by a site ever, um, you know, that somebody could possibly take offence uh, with that. But I think the important thing is that it, that it gives that historical connection. And many of Ngāti, Ngāti Māmoi descendants today may, may not know that there's these places here in Wellington. Um, this, this last question at the end here might seem a little controversial, but you might well ask the question, why are there no Nazi tour names um, here in, in, in Wellington? And you might answer, because I'm up here on the podium. Um, 
Uh, of, of course, I have uh, Nazi tour of Hockenbach. Uh, but the, the answer, I think, is more simple than that, that they weren't here. Uh, and so occupation provides naming. And as you can see from that various, very earliest times, um, even Coupe, um, who only had a really fleeting uh, visit here, um, left, uh, left his mark. Um, I haven't got all of these, but there are there are bird names. Um, you might say, well, Tangi um, Pekeo uh, is not quite a bird. It, it's what's called an Amaru um, Waiwa. It, it's a spirit bird. Tangi uh, Pekeo, um, and this is another argument. So now Victorian. My view is Mapairangi. Mapairangi. If you go across to the lesser peak, that's Tangi Te Kiro. Um, up there, sometimes they say it's the same peak, but I say, why would it be um, in, in that sense? Uh, and uh, I won't go into the story of Nake, Nake and Whataitai, um, uh, but of course, when Whataitai died on, on, on after the, uh, that uplift in 1460 maybe, but maybe way back further in time, um, the spirit of the Tanifa ascended to Tani, the Kiro, the Kiro um, crying out. Uh, um, Nutukaka could just simply refer to, but heaven knows whether, whether um, you'll be familiar with uh, Kakabik, the, the plant. Um, I have seen the Kakabik out there, um, not many, they, they're hard to find, but um, in, in that sense, this is, this is out of Boom Rock. Um, you know, we, we have, and as you'd expect, a number of name, names attached to Kaka, in, 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 so um, uh, Tarikaka, um, and and, uh, and and others, um, and in in in, uh, in Worcester Bay, not 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 well, not a live bird, I suppose. Uh, Kakariki, uh, Hutia Pa, um, just uh, right there near where the old pilot station was. Um, it was the old the old tar site. Um, Wellington City decided they would clear the trees off there. No one ever told them that there was a pass site there, that it was significant. No one told them it was an archaeological site um, uh, there, but uh, that's, a, that's a whole other story. Um, we need to, to, um, uh, to look after our sites, um, and uh, uh, we need to um, remember them and, and have those so that people know what they are and what's important about that. Uh, the Kakariki, that, that's a story about, um, um, and I've forgotten it just, but uh, they got there and they were attacked, I think, and they had some uncooked Kakariki plucked and ready to go. Um, but uh, but the, the, the battle arrived and um, they had to eat uh, uncooked Kakariki, which couldn't have been very appetising in any event um, in there. All right, so just to finish off, um, I want to just say something about the, uh, I mean, there's a huge numbers of, um, uh, of, of, of these um, uh, New Zealand company names, um, Wakefield, Evan, Evans, Abel Smith, Lampton, Dorset, Jerningham, Edward Jerningham, Wakefield, William Mainsmith, um, many more, plus the ships, Kiruba, Adelaide, and Burby, Tory or Oriental, I think there's more than that. Um, there, there were, of course, uh, land commissioners, um, politicians, and others. So, naming, um, when you conquer somewhere, you name it. In, in that sense, um, 
in this sense, I think I think we need to we understand history if we understand uh, the names uh, that went before. And sometimes they change, and uh, we need to get them right. So I just want to finish with just this little map here, which is um, I thought quite interesting. It's a, um, if um, have any of you worked in Farm State Building? Uh, I know it's uh, being uh, redone at the moment, but uh, you'll be familiar with uh, that area. If, if you have a look around, um, uh, aside from uh, Timakori, which is, um, well, I can't even say it right as it's written, but uh, never mind. Um, you, you, you look at, okay, there's Governor Bowen. Sydney was a, a later addition um, uh, in there. Bolton was one of the ships, the Aurora, and, and others in there. Um, but of course, this was um, before it became a, a European cemetery, was the Māori burial ground for, um, uh, for Pipitea, Kumutoto, and to an extent, Kiao. Uh, of course, what happened there in, uh, in, in the 60s was the um, motorway. And uh, as, as you know, in that area, a thousand graves were shifted. Uh, many of those mildly, not all, not all by any means, um, in, 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 in that area. But I, I just thought as one of the little maps of, um, of um, little known maps of Wellington, uh, that's an interesting one. I'm not ready to